welcome to the Video Store Podcast. I am your host, Bo Sells, and today I am joined by acclaimed British actor Barney White. He is known for many roles in TV series like Ellie and Natasha, Petricor, and Professor T. In this podcast, we will be talking about the Jonathan Glazer film Sexy Beast. So, uh, how are you, Barney? I'm very well, thanks, Bo. Thanks, thanks <laughs> for having me on. Yeah, of course, of course. Thanks for uh, wanting to do this. It's uh, a pleasure. The pleasure is all mine. Yeah, it's great to uh, to to do this not in Flemish for once um, and, uh, and meet some uh, new people from different countries. Uh, <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, so where did your interest in cinema start? Good question. Um, well, I, I started. I started mostly. My interest in cinema, I think, has grown up. My interest in theatre. I did yeah. a lot of theatre as a as a child, um, and uh, you know, d- did a lot of youth theatre and uh, went to the theatre a lot. My mum and dad live right in the centre of Oxford. There's a theatre at the end of their road, and we used to have people come and stay. Actors come and stay from the theatre, and uh, okay. and you know, I'd meet them and talk to them and go and see their performances. So I think. First and foremost, my love of of, of theatre kind of brought me into my love of cinema. Right. Um, yeah. And uh, it, are there uh, there like uh, uh, films or, or TV series uh, based on on um, theatre performances you uh, you especially like? Well, I I I'm a sucker. I'm a sucker for a Shakespeare film. Yeah, not not all of them are brilliant. <laughs> better ones than others. Um, <laughs> yeah. but when it works, I think it really, really works. Um, yeah, and there's been some really, really good ones in the mm-hmm. past. Um, yeah, I, that recently Ray Fiennes did Coriolanus. I don't know if you saw that, but that was uh, really no. brilliant. Um, he's such an amazing actor. But um, yeah, so I'm a, I'm a real sucker for a Shakespeare. Uh, right. Uh, when I was at when I was at school, I did a play called Glen Gary Glen Ross, which is by David Mamet, and um, we, we 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 just performed it. But there's an amazing film with just the most fantastic cast. It's got Al Pacino, Kevin Spacey, Jack Lemmon, yeah. um, Ed Harris, Alec Baldwin. I mean, it's real kind of big hitters. Um, yeah. And I remember watching that film and and thinking, God, yeah, this <laughs> this would be good. <laughs> I'd like to do this. I haven't seen it. I I, uh, I should put it. I think it is on my watch list already. Uh, it's a pretty famous movie. Yeah. But uh, like the uh, the Kenneth Branagh adaptations, uh, do you like those? Yeah, I love them. Henry V. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah. In uh, it, there's an amazing speech, very famous speech in Henry V. Once more unto the breach, where he's got this stirring, amazing speech where he's trying to get his 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 army ready for battle. Um. And uh, that's he does that brilliantly, Kenneth Branagh. He's very yeah. good at that kind of thing, the stirring yeah. kind of over the top emotional stuff. He's uh, yeah, he's I really love him as an actor. Yeah. Have you ever worked with him? No, I haven't. Sadly, uh, that's a that's a pipe dream. It may happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you never yeah. know. Um, yeah, his Hamlet's also really good. It's a bit showy. It's a bit Hollywoody, but it's um, it's good. And it, and again, it has an amazing cast. Yeah, it's really long, right? It's like three hours. Yeah. <laughs> my, yeah. Uh, my girlfriend had to watch it uh, because she uh, studied archaeology and uh, yeah. art science. And uh, she she had to watch it for a class. And she was like, oh, for fuck's sake, it's three hours and 20 minutes. <laughs> and she, uh, she zones out after 90 minutes or something. So so uh, yeah. it was uh, quite a challenge, but she did like it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> That's in his kind of you know mid-90s decadent. Mm-hmm. Of, I don't think he cut that play at all, and it's a long play. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it is, it is. Yeah. But uh, that's that's a pretty big. Uh, yeah, in, in Belgium we say uh, the uh, the um, het is een uh, cultuur, which means it's a, a hole in my culture. Um, it's uh, it's like uh, I I should have watched that, but I haven't. Oh no, uh, definitely. I mean, there are so many film productions of Hamlet that you, you know you can you can pick yeah. or choose. There's a Mel Gibson one actually, which is good. It, it, he's he's it, as when he was a young man, and Mel Gibson was such a brilliant actor, so electric on on screen. Yeah. And uh, he does Hamlet really well. He's kind of you know he looks mad from the beginning, which I think helps. <laughs> the energy from Mad Max to Hamlet. Mm, exactly. Yeah. Well, actually. Uh, Mad Max Two was going to be uh, is is one of is definitely my top five films. I was I was thinking of picking that, but 
uh, All right. it's good to go with sexy beast instead. Also yeah. would have been nice because uh, that's uh, that's another hole in my culture. Uh, I have also haven't seen uh, like the the first three Mad Max films, uh, only Fury Road, which I loved. Yeah, it was great, wasn't it? Oh, so yeah. great. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of the best movies of the decade. Like, yeah, definitely. Definitely. I saw it in the um, IMAX in London and just oh. remember kind of, it's like being on a roller yeah. coaster, isn't it? You're just sat there. Yeah, kind of, uh, absolutely. Overwhelmed by all of this sensory experience. It's great. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I never, I had never seen anything like it before. I was like, this is so new and original and, and unlike anything uh, that existed before because it's so like the the plot really doesn't matter and like the pure, purely the characters the, the action um and the score the soundtrack is uh, yeah, incredible easy. and it's so imaginative i mean i love that um guy with the electric guitar flamethrower yeah. <laughs> bouncing around on bungee ropes yeah. And, and he, yeah um it's it's the mad max 2 is like that the plot is incredibly simple it's basically they're they're stuck in a city and they have to get out of it. it, it and so in, 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 uh, influential. So many films have kind of been based off that. Um, yeah, it's a little bit yeah. like uh, Escape from New York. Yeah, from exactly. Fantastic. And I'm trying to remember the name of that zombie film where they're stuck on the in the um, shopping mall and they have to get out. Ah, uh, Day of the Dead. Uh, Dawn of the Dead. Dawn of the Dead. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You can see. You can see. Definitely was influenced by mm -hmm. the. Uh, yeah, it's the simplicity of Mad Max 2, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Uh because there was like uh the 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 original one in the seventies and then the remake from Zack Snyder in beginning of the two thousands, I think. Mm. Um but uh both of them are, are like really good. I watched yeah. it on a on, on a first date uh once. Uh the, the <laughs> I had never seen it before, so it was like uh what do you want to watch? And she was like, yeah, you choose. And I was like, can we watch Dawn of the Dead? And she was like, ah, I don't know what that is. Uh, <laughs> but put it on and not the best idea for it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> it didn't blossom into it. No, uh, no, no, no. I never <laughs> saw a relationship. Uh, again. <laughs> it's no. an odd note to start on, actually. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Film. With my current girlfriend i mean, we've been together for like two and a half years so it, that's uh that's the right relationship uh i we watched uh hot fuzz on a, as our first movie on one of our okay. dates so yeah. it was like a test she passed uh <laughs> and uh, i was very happy <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> um but uh how did you uh did you get into acting you you told me uh you yeah you, you you've been doing it from a from a very young age uh at yeah. school yeah, so I mean, I I, I um I did a lot of theatre as, as as a child. So in in Britain, it's the theatre is what you do. You do school plays, and I'm sure mm. you do that as well. Um, and youth yeah, theatre, not that much interested. actually. It's not really not really uh in in yeah, it's not really something uh like like with you guys or in the US. Um, it's it's really a thing. Uh, every year there's a theatre club and a, a school play, but with that, it's like uh. Sometimes I, I saw it once, I think, uh, when I was in, uh, when I was like six years old, there was a play at my school and then I never saw it again. So... <laughs> that was the only one. Do you remember yeah, what the play was? But... Dawn yeah. of the Dead. <laughs> 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 um, so yeah, it's a, you do, yeah, I do a lot of theatre. There's always a school play at the end of every term. And I did um, the theatres you know, in my hometown, always have youth programs. So I do that as well. And basically, Bo, when I was a kind of teenager, I realized that I was always desperate to be the center of attention. So being an actor kind of was a no, no brainer. How can I get everyone looking at me and listening to me? Well, I'll become an actor. Um, and then I, I went to university, did a degree in English literature. All right. And then, um, and then kind of went from there. I moved to London and I got an agent and uh, and started acting. That was yeah long ago that I'd care to put on uh, <laughs> on records. No, that was about, that was about nine nine years ago. I moved to London. Yeah, so um, all right. Yeah, I've been going 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 uh, going at it ever since. And it's interesting in in the UK. London is definitely the centre of 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 the mm. industry. In America, that it's it's split across cities. You know, you have New yeah. York and, and LA, and even other places are centres. But London mm -hmm. is definitely the prime focus of the UK's uh, yeah scene. 
Yeah, yeah, I uh, I noticed because like uh, I think of of uh, the entire cast of um, of Professor T, everyone was from London, I think. Yeah, yeah, a lot of us lived there. Yeah, 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 um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's swelling, swelling with actors as a city. Yeah. You can't move for actors in London. <laughs> it's so great. It's like my favorite city uh, to to uh, to go to, and uh, it's it's like everything's so close um close by like like you've, you've got uh the west end and and like movie theaters and mm. like everything i i love it's like on a yeah yeah uh 20 minute subway ride like a tube ride max uh yeah. maximum. so uh yeah, that's right next time you're in london obviously let me know but there's a brilliant theater called the prince charles cinema right in the yeah um, have you been yeah no i haven't been i i walked past it but uh, a friend of mine uh who spends like five weekends a year in London okay. uh yeah he, uh, he, he always t- tells me there's like uh they they do like when I was there I really wanted to go because uh they were playing Suspiria um from the 70s yeah and I really wanted to watch it on a big screen but I was there with my with my mom and I thought I would uh kind of traumatize her if I if we would do that so uh yeah. <laughs> we did it uh eventually but I really did wanted to go it's like next to um uh not piccadilly but that's the square it's that's just the square. By the square, yeah yeah and they do they do kind of marathons so you can watch all three lord of the rings films oh. back to back and and they do kind of sing sing-alongs from musicals mamma mia is like a massive event there you're always seeing oh. kind of big groups of people going in drunk to go and sing along to mamma mia but um when i was in antwerp filming professor t i found found the cinema this series which i'd never ah I'd yeah never the other two and I saw such such great films there, classics. They had a Pacino season when I was yeah. there. So I saw S- Serpico, Dog Day Afternoon on the big oh. screen. It was just brilliant. Amazing. Yeah. It's like uh, on the, uh, yeah, that you mean uh, in the studio, right? Uh, it's like yeah. the building's called the studio. There, yeah. there was like an acting school in the past. Uh, yeah, it's an amazing cinema. They have such good programming. Um, yeah, yeah, I saw uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show there recently. Uh, yeah, that was just on as I was leaving. I was sad to miss that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're, uh, they're like, like right now, I uh, I missed it, but there's like a Scorsese, a Scorsese season now. Uh, so uh, so it's like, yeah, all the Scorsese classics, uh, Casino, um, Wolf of Wall Street, uh, like mainly the older uh, Scorsese stuff yeah. uh, playing right now. It's yeah, amazing. Yeah. Actually, I'm uh, going to see, tonight I'm going to see Raging Bull. It's on at the cinema oh. around the corner, funnily enough. Nice, nice. Yeah, London is also such an amazing city for movie theaters. Uh, yeah. Like a lot of cult theaters and and, uh, and and like the the mainstream theaters, you can have any, everything there. Uh, yeah. But um, yeah, so uh, so... Were there any other dreams you wanted to pursue uh, while you were acting? Like you, you told me you were you're writing. Um, is it then? Is it writing for theater then, or writing for uh, for a, a TV series or a film? Um, yeah, it's it's writing for film and TV actually. All right. Theater. Yeah, um, yeah, that's a dream for sure. I'm yeah. trying to make it happen at the moment. So far, I've not been. Uh, yeah, that lucky in, in in that respect, but it's 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 all about getting your head down and, and getting it on the page, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah, um, yeah. No, it's uh, yeah. I've had a, a, written a few scripts for TV that have never gotten off the ground, but I'm com- confident this this time will be different. And I've got a, a bit of time off now, but you know, to to really focus on it. So um, that's the, mm. that's the plan. And and how does it go? How's your process? Like, can you? sit down for eight hours a day and then then like just beat something out or or uh, <laughs> not even no. close not <laughs> even close Thank you need you. a bit long period of time don't you basically because yeah really really 80 percent of it is procrastination <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely um but uh like yeah tell me about your process what uh, where does your inspiration come from uh but it, I think it comes from. I think it comes from, for that. I I went and spent a lot of time um, with with policemen. My friend is a policeman, so I uh, I did a, a drive around with with him. I got in his mm-hmm. police car and kind of drove around. He's, he's a detective in the Metropolitan Police in Central London. He drove me around Central London in his car. It was so great, and just getting that feeling of you know being in a cop car. You see yeah. 
why they have this inflated sense of uh, <laughs> of power because you do feel so powerful you know yeah um uh so that you know reading reading up on it um I, I really, this this was my biggest role to date you know a lead part in a returning series and on a on a in prime time british television mm -hmm. so I, I i put a lot into the research part of it yeah um that film i did in belgium for instance miss miss marks i was playing a um like a victor it's 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 set in the victorian era and i was playing an industrialist and i had a big top hat and uh and sideburns and things like that and and and, okay. and with with costume drama with period drama um you know you do a lot of preparation but actually getting into the costume that's 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 a, such a big step for your preparation yeah. you suddenly feel like you're you're in it you're you're, yeah. you're, you're the character i can imagine um, so it varies so much you know you can do you can do a lot of theory you can sit in your room and 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 you know practice all of these things but sometimes just getting onto set and putting on your outfit actually is the big is the big reveal yeah. for you you know you, you haven't quite felt it you you don't really fill in the character's skin and then suddenly you've got a big top hat and sideburns and you think actually, yeah. Yeah, this this is this is all the prep i needed to do um so it, it huge hugely varies but i'm i'm i did it i did a degree in english right and 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 so a lot of my preparation is script stuff finding mm. finding moments in the script either when i'm talking or people are talking about me or um you know my response to things and that that that's how i build the character it's mm. always always starts with with my initial reading of, of 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 the script all right yeah that's uh that's nice because do you do you find many many moments that that like the the the, the screenwriter didn't think of uh in the script but you see like an empty gap for your character where you can fill in something or something uh, absolutely yeah yeah definitely definitely and um and yeah you, you, finding finding the kind of through line mm. it's, this is this is an ensemble piece professor t there's loads of characters yeah. right and yeah. they've all got their own storyline and they've all got their own background so you know you've got to find your own you've got to create that independent character yourself the the script writer doesn't do that they give you the scenes and mm -hmm. then you've got to you've got to imagine what 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 your character's doing when he gets home what, yeah. what he has for breakfast what he uh uh mm -hmm. what he likes to do on his weekends that's that's all your own creation and it's influenced heavily by what he says and does you know and 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 the clues that are given to you but that yeah. uh, that independent world is created by yourself which is why it's so fun that preparation bit is so fun because you're inventing you know, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're coming up with all of these these ideas yeah it's um, like writing it's yeah. life exactly yeah. it's it's uh, it's it's like writing so that's that's generally how I prepare for these things is 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 getting the script and then and then and letting your imagination do the do the work from there. Yeah, yeah, th those moments. And actually, sometimes sometimes it's it's sometimes it doesn't sometimes a, a character doesn't break in, until you've done it for a week. You don't get re you don't get rehearsal at all with with these TV shows, right? And, oh, and don't you have like a, a little uh, like a week or something uh, before you start shooting? Okay sometimes sometimes the director you know will will uh will prioritize that but um often you you uh you just turn up and you have to do it you, you all of yeah. the prepara preparation is individual um and you know that's not how we live our, our lives that's not how human beings are we interact yeah. a lot of our character and our responses is is is, is from how other people act mm. um, so that can really influence it and and i was really blessed on 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 this show and in having Emma because she we did a lot of our scenes together she mm -hmm. um is very dedicated uh actor and and she wanted just as much as me to 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 nail this and to do a lot of work on it so we'd meet up we'd speak on the phone um so the preparation was done with her which was so nice because I, I came into this yeah. not feeling not feeling alone I I, I felt like I had a kind of assured sense of of how we were going to do it together mm -hmm. and um that made a really big difference yeah like you you get to know get to know the cast so well because you you've been working together for three years mm -hmm. now uh i think that really like your relationships as first as people evolve and like the the performances evolve with that i think yeah absolutely yeah definitely definitely mm -hmm. um yeah that's very true in the the character development i mean yeah it uh it would be really nice to have rehearsals before yeah. things but it, but it just doesn't happen uh, 
so much. It's it's a big thing in theatre, you know, that's how you yeah that's how you create a show. Um but in film the the a lot of the work is personal and independent. So um yeah, it's a big difference actually. Mm -hmm. Huge difference yeah. in the preparation. Yeah, that's what's what's uh like what are the the pros and cons for you uh in, in theater and, and film like mm. compared to uh, the the two yeah so well what one is the rehearsal process as i spoke about and um in theater you're part of a company you know you're part of yeah. a team you you're you're uh, a key member of the creative process from the beginning right until the end if you're a member of the cast you know yeah you start the first day of rehearsal and you're there when the curtain closes at the end of the end of the run whereas with film i'm not in every scene i'm not in i'm you know i'm not in every day and mm -hmm. um, things happen without me decisions creative decisions are made when i'm not in the room um so it's 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 can sometimes feel less collaborative yeah it can feel like there's a lot of um different people pulling it in, in different ways but mm -hmm. that's part of what makes it amazing is that you have yeah somehow this 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 um kind of group created process happens even though it's it's quite disparate you have very mm -hmm. different people doing very different things um one amazing thing about theater is just that 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 live emotional experience of standing there in front of people and and, and having to do it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know um and if you're if you're a big part in a play it's 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 continuous you know you have your start middle and end every night and your character goes on a journey every night whereas with film we, we film it out of sequence i might have a i might have the last scene of the shoot right at the beginning and mm -hmm. have i got have i been able to get there emotionally yet have I, am i prepared for that you know it's it's different whereas with theatre you have that kind of organic live sense of right, i'm building up for this right I, here we go you know I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm getting a sense of genuinely how that character would kind of progress in this in this moment um and i don't have to do it 15 different times from yeah. from different angles um but that's that's again part of the amazing thing about film is mm -hmm. you think god I've, i've done that and then they go right yeah we're moving close and you go oh, i've got to do that again <laughs> so, so it's just it's such a different skill being able to find those those moments of of, of, of right i need to do this again I need to focus mm -hmm. i need to i need to work out how i'm going to do it um yeah those those are the major differences i think yeah uh like i i um i noticed uh with professor t um how how it and and how uh how combat shoots it's like they did so many one takers um yeah. they're like an entire scene in one shot uh like in one um one angle uh and then then like with a very dynamic camera and yeah. uh I, I often looked on the monitor because I had to check out uh, what the extras were doing, if they were doing what I told them to do. Uh, so, um, yeah, I, I thought that was very nice because then you don't have like 15 different angles to, oh. to replicate your uh, your performance from yeah. like the last one. So I think that's like you can do the one take a few uh, a few times over. Yes. Like then you have it and... and um, It, it all almost always looks really good yeah i agree i really liked that way of, of of doing it and it's it's really interesting because it's it's so much more technical film acting mm. because you've got to hit your marks <laughs> yeah <laughs> you, you've got to you've got to angle your body you know in a, in a way in theater you just you just stand and, and speak <laughs> uh, um uh so yeah doing those big one shot um scenes was was great learning process because not only have you got to you can't you can't do it again you know <laughs> if, if it's a two minute scene and we're doing it all in one take you know you've got to you've got to be there from beginning middle to the end mm -hmm. of, the, of that thing you know you can't say can i pick this up no uh, halfway through oh sorry i've messed up a line can i pick this up so yeah you're right in that sense it was it was like theater mm -hmm. yeah um but with no rehearsal no no <laughs> rehearsal <I'll>, uh... <laughs> Tell uh, tell Dries. Uh, yeah, exactly. Hey, if we're doing yeah. a season four, mate, I need. Uh... <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so uh, yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll be talking uh, about uh, the film Sexy Beast this week. Yes. I, I was wondering uh, why you chose this film. Um, I chose it because it's it's you know one of my one of my favorite films, and I think it's just 
it's a very good film to discuss. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> There's a lot going on. It's very interesting. Um, a lot of fantastic performances, great cinematography, um, amazing script. Yeah. So as a film to kind of sit down and, and talk about, I think it's, uh, it's mm -hmm. my favourite. You know, if someone's seen it, I always sit down and talk to them about it. Oh, you've seen it? Yeah, what do you think? What about yeah. this? What about this moment? So, uh, so yeah. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, I, I really did. I uh, I uh, rated it uh, three and a half stars on my letterbox. I maybe four with a rewatch. Uh, do do you have a letterbox? No. It's like well, I've never even heard of it. You never heard of it? Okay, so uh, letterbox is an app. It's like um, kind of yeah, like Instagram. It's a it's a social media app. Uh, but you can um, rate, log, and review films on there and and some tv series too right so um so like you have um you have a watch list you it's it's like if you have an account on imdb you can make a watch list there but, but you yeah. can make only one of them uh on letterbox you can make uh unlimited lists and um like you can follow people and then see what they what they watched uh yeah it's like okay. focus is a little fucked um yeah. but uh yeah, so you can log stuff and then see what your uh, what your friends uh, watch. Still download it. Yeah, it's, it's really really cool. Um, yeah. uh, Although I'll wait for you to give Sexy Bees four stars rather than yeah. three and a half. Before <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> oh, tonight. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I really really enjoyed it. I, I thought it was like a, a very introspective Guy Ritchie film. Yeah, Not well, it's funny you say Guy that Ritchie. because what one of the main things I think about it is that. Uh, you know, British culture is obsessed with with crime and punishment. Mm. There actually aren't that many great British gangster films. Are just, uh, you know, um, in my opinion, and yeah. I think that, um, you know, you can, you can count them on one hand. And I think this one is this is kind of what it's all been crying out for, you know, years and years of watching, watching kind of lots of people talking like that in, <laughs> in these mockney accents. And then suddenly you see so you speak, you go, yeah, this is how it should be done. Uh -huh. It's, it's um, it, it, it feels like a kind of um, uh, a game changer. Although actually, subsequently, um, people have been more inspired by the Guy Ritchie films than than yeah. the Jonathan Glazer ones. Sadly, I think, in my opinion. Mm. Although the Guy Ritchie ones are highly entertaining. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I think so too. Especially like Snatch and and Lock, Stock and Two Smoking yeah, Bear. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're 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 great, great. Yeah, fun. and like the the Gentleman um, came pretty close to that recently. Oh, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it, but brilliant cast. Yeah. Yeah, Steve yeah. Grant and Colin Farrell and yeah. yeah, Matthew McConaughey. Uh, yeah, yeah like an insane cast. Mm -hmm. Um, a very um, a very original uh, story structure too. It's like with uh, I think. Yeah, you Grant or um, Charlie Hunnam as an um, unreliable narrator. So like the okay. the entire story gets told by him, and yeah. stuff changes in a very Guy Ritchie way. Right. So uh, right. I like that. But yeah. Guy Ritchie is making like two movies a year recently. It's like cranking out so many films. Oh yeah. A yeah, lot yeah, of them yeah. aren't that good, but uh, <laughs> I yeah. like that he's. <laughs> It's securing the inheritance for his children, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, I watched recently the Aladdin he did for, for Disney, mm. and um, I didn't actually get through the whole film, but it, he, he definitely knows how to keep an audience hooked, doesn't he, Guy Rich? Yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. They're always entertaining, um, even if they don't quite hit the heights of his early, uh, earlier stuff. Yeah, mm. he can always yeah, keep them hooked. Yeah, at least it's entertaining. Like, mm. I, I mind watching a movie of his because it's always at least it's fun um yeah 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 yeah, um, I'm, yeah. That's, that's actually why i think why i think sexy beast is 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 one of my favorite films because it's so fun yeah it's it's, it's you know it's a it's a it's a crime caper essentially yeah. it's it's hard it's a very simple storyline it's a it's it's a lot of fun it goes incredibly quickly yeah. <laughs> uh it's only you know an hour and a half yeah um, and, and despite its kind of themes and, um, you know, a, a, a lot of the kind of passages in it, I don't think it takes itself too seriously. I think it's... No, uh, no because it's very dark, but it's also very funny. Yeah. Uh, um, and, um, like, the, the performances are so... Uh, yeah, like, Ben Kingsley is chewing the scenery everywhere. Yeah, uh, oh, yeah. He always yeah. beats things three times. Uh, yeah. I noticed he's like... 
when he when he does like an expression, it's like he, he says the expression like three different ways. Yes. Uh, and yeah. I thought that was really funny. Uh, Ray Winston yeah. will never not be funny to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, it's interesting with those two performances. I mean, Ray Winston, he he he's an actor's actor, I think. You know, he um mm. as an actor watching him, you just think, God, he's what he's doing there is just so brilliant. And and actually, um Tim Roth and uh, Gary Oldman cast him in films they directed, which I, I suppose proves that he is yeah. an actor's actor. And if you ever get a chance to see Nil Nil by Mouth, which is Gary Oldman's only ever film as a director right. i mean you've got to watch it it's so good ray winston is this kind of um abusive um uh, bloke in in london in the 90s beating up his wife um and he's so nasty and so vicious and and so brutal and that's that was his kind of iconic role and then he did sexy beast where he's soft and um mm. you know and lazy and not up for it and just the shift is so brilliant and it's so perfectly cast and so brilliantly acted and um, people say that he's all, he can only play one thing, Ray Winston, but I really think that he's more subtle than that. He, he, yeah. His performance is, is, is so nuanced because you can tell that he used to be a tough guy, but now yeah. he, he's not up for it anymore. No. <laughs> that, that brilliant first scene where he's lying there talking about how hot it is the, with the sun kind of beating down and he, he can kind of barely move in the heat. He's so kind of like <laughs> swollen from it. He's just, he's, he's kind of leaning over and going, oh. Yeah. Man kind of lying back again, then sitting up. He gets that <laughs> cold towel and puts it on his bollocks because he's, he's overheating. And um, people often talk, actually, it's, it's, it's the thing in the industry about that Ben Kingsley performance as being so different because he played Gandhi. He'd won an Oscar for playing Gandhi, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the most famous, Gandhi. famous um, you know, uh, peace lovers in, in human history. Uh, and, uh, and then he plays this psychotic kind of um <laughs> criminal in, in this film and people talk about that shift you know how can you play gandhi and then play don logan in, in sexy yeah. Beast? um such a brilliant shift and and it is and i also think that ray winston's one is 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 brilliant if you watch nil by mouth you just see this nasty kind of spitting dog of a person just nice. constantly angry and then him in uh, in sexy beast he's, he's beyond all that he's just he loves his life he's in paradise <laughs> in Spain, and he doesn't want it to end and um, yeah, I think those two performances are so brilliant, and and all the supporting cast is yeah. quite brilliant. And uh, Ian McShane is the nasty the crime man. boss. Is, uh, it's is scary. So it's scary. Like, scary. When they go for the ride uh, at the end of the film, and, and yeah. you're like, yeah, we're we're, we're gonna spoil this, uh, FYI, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, because it's it's a film from 2000. People have a. Uh, have had the time to watch. Had ample it. time to watch it. Don't worry, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure uh, but when he when he just shoots that guy in in, uh, in his apartment, he uh, he's like, yeah, yeah, give me a drink, and then he pours his drink, he gives it to him, and instantly shoots him. Yeah, it's very so scary. Yeah, and actually that moment, I always think, you know, the camera's so close on Ray Winston, mm -hmm. and he's giving nothing away. You know, can see that he's terrified, but he's not doing. He's not doing much. He's just stood there and he's so still. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a it's a fantastic performance. Yeah, yeah. Also, like the 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 vibes in Spain, like the the entire first half or even more of the film uh, are in Spain, and and like I really wanted to go on a vacation to Spain. In, in <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, you you like feel the heat. And the, the sun oh, yeah. and the nice the the nice dinners they have. Yeah, uh, great, great in the pool. Yeah, yeah, that that's that's such a brilliant um, uh, observation. Actually, you feel the heat, and then when they go to London, you know it's cramped and it's constantly mm -hmm. raining, and there's no sunshine. It's dark. Every scene's at night in London, yeah. you know, um, and and you know everyone in little bars smoking and kind of like moist from the from the um, from the rain outside. Uh, yeah, I think I think. And they it was all in sleazy bars in London. Yeah. So you've got these these um, t the kind of antithesis of, of of places, don't you? You have the the paradise mm -hmm. of the south of Spain with all of that space, and then you have the cramped London of of, of his nightmare, you know, of his hell. Yeah, um, yeah, because he, he it it's like he ran away from his job, but he also ran away from London as an uh, as an area. Um, yeah, even I, I think that's really. 
yeah clever like like yeah. making a contrast like that definitely yeah exactly and um yeah but he, he you know as as the, it's it's the surrealist elements of it you know these these hallucinations he's having of this kind of giant devil figure bunny yeah, it's so weird it's like the the thing from uh from donny darko but scary. yeah it is it is like the thing from donny darko absolutely and there's a there's a um there's a poem by wb yates where he talks about this beast coming out of spiritus mundi and it's it's meant to be basically kind of um you know this hellish figure um mm. That's what it always reminds me of this 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 idea that the second coming actually isn't isn't something isn't God it's it's the devil it's the, okay. it's that we're being stalked not by by paradise but by hell mm -hmm. um, is really kind of prominent in that in that film mm -hmm. um, yeah that that's that that surrealism is is is, is brilliant it's, mm -hmm. it's it's again what makes it so different from from all of those um, other kind of Guy Ritchie films and uh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's very it's it's a little more layered than a than a Guy Ritchie film. Mm. Uh, also, because I um, noticed at the end, uh, or no, uh, yeah, like at the beginning, it was uh, directed by Jonathan Glazer, who also directed Under the Skin. Yeah, uh, have you seen that? Uh, yeah, 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 I have. It's crazy. It's the, crazy as well, isn't it? I mean, I think it even weirder, an even more. Yeah, yeah. It's so um so uh yeah how do you say that in english it's just so weird and y you feel so weird watching it um like normally you you want to see scarlett johansson naked but like <laughs> it's so creepy yeah 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 exactly <laughs> it's, it's bad news yeah i know and and a lot of that i mean it's 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 very different because a lot of those people that she picks up aren't actors you know they they, yeah. they just shot that she just drove around glasgow in a van picking mm -hmm. people up you know that's that, that yeah incredible where sexy beast is is very scripted it's mm -hmm. it's uh you know the, the script is is, is is such an important character in that film mm -hmm. yeah absolutely but it i think he's such a such an interesting director and he hasn't really done that much uh or... yeah he he um his filmography is tiny yeah three or four feature films. He's just actually released one, which has been very, very well. It hasn't come out in the cinemas yet, but it's it's been oh, doing okay. a um, um, festival circuit and has been very well received. Um, but he he directs it, it, some of my favorite music videos. He directed a Radiohead video for the um, uh, song Karma Police, which is amazing. <laughs> and oh, there's, yeah. a, there's a, there's a, <laughs> Not not that we should hold adverts up as uh, as high art, but uh, there's a advertisement for Guinness, a commercial for Guinness um, that he did as well, which is very iconic, famous um, of this guy surfing and the, and the waves become these horses. Um, no. So yeah, he, he, every, everything he's 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 Midas touch. Everything he touches turns to gold, in my opinion. But he uh, mm. um, this this is his his debut, and I think his best film. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's also uh, it's his most uh, accessible film, I think. Um, only having seen two of them, um, if if the rest is more like under the skin, then this is uh, it's very accessible. Like everyone, anyone can watch this and and enjoy it. I think. Yeah, uh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, and 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 as I said, it, there's there's not there's not that many great british gangster films cr even crime films you know you, so so to have one that, that kind of bucks so much of the genre not make it silly too silly um but to have that sense of kind of comedy and um and menace um i think is he, he achieved something really spectacular with that um because it's very easy for it to become cliched you know the, yeah. the kind of because it's it is i think inherently funny that the kind of cockney gangster turning up and hello what's good yeah <laughs> yes you're gonna do it you're gonna do it um <laughs> but he does it i mean the casting is obviously brilliant as we discussed but the the script is so tight and um and so perfect that actually pulls it off mm -hmm. it doesn't ever, it doesn't doesn't ever stray over to becoming too silly yeah yeah absolutely it, it really walks that tight rope uh of of yeah. like becoming silly or being too dark and yeah exactly like right in between that yeah it is very dark but still so yeah so entertaining yeah uh, there's yeah. a there's a there's a 
very influential British playwright <coughs> called uh, Harold Pinter. And right. it was it made me laugh always in uh, in Belgium because whenever someone says Pinter, I think they're saying Pinter. <laughs> 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 anyway, oh. Harold Pinter is incredibly influential. Um, incredibly influential writer and uh, uh you know he's one of those few writers that's got an adjective he's you you call something pinteresque like you might call it kafkaesque yeah or, or or chekhovian you know it's uh it's it's he's one of those few writers that has that and he invented this this style of theater called well it he he didn't call it this but critics have subsequently called it comedy of menace ah uh, yeah i, I so heard it's of funny that. but it's 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 terrifying, you know. There's, mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's. You're laughing slightly because you're, you, you don't know what to do. And it, a lot of his um, plays, it, it, and his dialogue centers around someone intimidating someone else and a power play in a scene. Mm -hmm. Very sparse plot, just like Sexy Beast. You know, not much goes on, but the the dialogue is really tight. And he has these pauses. They call it a pinter pause, where there's just a stop. Mm -hmm. and no one talks and he just he just kind of lets the menace settle and then they go again and uh uh martin mcdonough who who uh, wrote and directed in bruges and um yeah. banshees of Anisha, and cl clearly very influenced i think by harold pinter and yeah. uh and i think sexy beast too is you you can feel it it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's like a pinter play you know particularly that first act one location yeah um happy and then suddenly something comes in that completely mm -hmm. changes it yeah. yeah it's it's so classic but it, it works so well also the the boulder in the beginning so yeah rapid. so what do you th what do you think of that what does what does that symbolize for you what is the, yeah uh... like it's it's something so unexpected something so uh yeah out of the blue that uh the, the boulder the boulder kind of symbolizes uh the arrival of um of ben kingsley later yeah. i think yeah. because um yeah the, he he also everyone's terrified when when ben kingsley calls his uh his friends so yeah i think the boulder's like that but it's so funny like so funny. jump in the pool and they're like trying to lift it but of course they can't and they're like signaling to, towards each other yeah and he's there with the, he, he's there with the little fan isn't he fanning himself and yeah. he just gets completely <laughs> soaked by it he's fanning, he's a tiny he's little like... fan <laughs> So good. He's like flabbergasted. He doesn't know what's happening. He's like yeah, yeah. standing there for another minute, like what just happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Um, it's really funny. Yeah. Uh, but you uh you said uh Martin McDonough was also very inspired inspired by uh by uh Finkter? No, no. Finter, yeah, yeah, Finter, Finter. yeah. Yeah. I mean that's that's the sense I get. A, a lot yeah. of Harold plays are about kind of one location, a couple of characters. And then usually two men coming in mm. and and disturbing that piece for some reason, yeah. which is, yeah. is is you know you see so much of it. It's the and you you know in Bruges is about two assassins, isn't it? That that uh, end up in this well, not strange to you, but strange <laughs> strange to them <laughs> place. Um, that that feels very um, like a thing to play. Though I, I actually performed yeah. this, this play at university, the birthday party, which is about this. Um, guest house on a in a english seaside town and this very normal guy just at this guest house living his life and then these two gangsters turn up um and you can't understand why they're there and they kind of torment him through their language no physical violence it's all it's all script just like don logan you know all, right. it's, it's all of the menace is, is in what he's saying and what he's not saying yeah yeah especially yeah uh and actually he has a line Don Logan, where he says, "It's not, it's not, it's not what you're saying. It's what you're not saying." <laughs> Almost <laughs> as a kind of homage to the to the genre, yeah. uh, uh, very knowing that nod. Um, but yeah, the idea of, of of something being disrupted by two strange men turning up, and actually, Don Logan, I think, is 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 quite heavily influenced in, uh, uh, by the birthday party. There's a character called Goldberg, who just has this, you know, uh, charisma. Um, but it's terrifying, mm -hmm. um, and he's just so intimidating with his language. Um, and it's 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 so funny because everything he says, Ben Kingsley, is is appalling. You know, yeah. even just even just saying no, he doesn't want to do something, or mm -hmm. yes, he wants to go into town, is so rude and horrible and disgusting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just uh, it, it's it's such when, a brilliant marriage of scripts uh, and performance. 
like uh, in the the scene where uh, where he eventually gets shot um they like the friends and and uh and ray winston's wife d um they they close like the the door like the the, the glass door and uh ben kingsley keeps screaming at the inside like you're a whore you're a dirty whore and I mean, like it's so uh yeah he's, he's like one of the rudest people you can you can come across yeah yeah Awful. definitely yeah yeah there's a scene they go he goes um i don't know if i'm gonna get, do this exactly right but he's that Ray, he's just arrived at Ray Woods and says, oh, do you want me to show you around, Don? And he goes, yeah, I'll take a look around when I take a piss. <laughs> <laughs> just silence. Okay. <laughs> like, his character is, like, always in control. Like, being that rude, everyone's constantly afraid of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, um, th- is there anything else you want to you wanna point out about the film? Before we go to uh, the next segment, the next section. No, not no, uh, uh, apart from I would uh, I would ha- hold it as one of the great British um, movies ever made, and, mm-hmm. and, and very anyone, underrated, I think. Very underrated, yeah. And um, and if anyone and anyone fancies it, you should definitely definitely get a get a Blu-ray. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> stick it in the stick it in the DVD DVD drive because it's um. It's it's very artfully done and, uh, mm-hmm. and it's it's rare that you see a, a couple of performances as, as yeah. strong and as different as those two that work so well together. As you said, you've got the the very restrained Ray Winston, and you've got Ben Kingsley, who, as you said, chews the scenery. Is such a great phrase. Mm. He is chewing the scenery, yeah, absolutely, you know, constantly. Um, it's, it's I, like yeah, did, 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 I think he got an Oscar nod for it. I think he got nominated for oh, really? Oscar film. I think, um, yeah, I think he did. Best supporting actor. Right. Um, check I'm if I can sure. even find the Blu-ray uh, in Belgium because it's so so hard to find Blu-rays these days. <laughs> yeah, well, you can always. Not that I would ever condone this, but you can always find a stream online, can't you? Both. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <absolutely. laughs> uh, yeah. Like, um, I was. But, um, I used to be against like torrenting and downloading and stuff, and then uh, we found out during the writer's strike that writers weren't paid anyway if you bought it or they weren't getting uh residuals and, and actors also weren't so yes and like yeah We're lining the pockets of the executives at disney yeah. by, uh, by not streaming the lion king when you want to watch it. <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> so uh so yeah i i uh, i looked up um sexy beasts blu-ray and i found a lot of porn uh, <laughs> yeah be careful what you google with this one for sure yeah <laughs> so very confusingly there was a um there was a a, a very ill-judged netflix dating show called sexy beasts uh All right. quite recently where they they dressed people up in these extraordinary uh kind of animal outfits to go dating so, so the I, wow. I think the kind of philosophy behind it was let's let's see if people will fall in love with someone based on their character rather than their face but yeah then then you have it's so off-putting and bizarre because yeah. you know, it's this person dressed as a kind of cat going like hello yeah what do you do for a living <laughs> yeah i'm an accountant <laughs> this is <laughs> very discombobulating i mean having them dressed like that yeah i think the, the producers didn't know uh about the existence of uh, furries back then yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly exactly yeah such a show is like a very weird breathing ground for uh for a lot of very weird kinks yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah never heard of it but uh i'll check no, it out I'm, well, I'm not recommending that just just for the record <laughs> so, yeah jonathan glazer's sexy beast not the netflix sexy beast no, no. <laughs> is what this podcast's about yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, all right, so then uh, we go to our uh, final segment. Um, uh, I've got a, I've prepared a little speed round, so I've got uh, five very short questions, and you uh, you answer each of them with uh, a movie that pops into your mind or a TV show. Um, that's also possible. So, uh, what's your favorite heist film? Um, Inside Man. All right. Yeah, uh, yeah with um, Denzel Washington and um, Clive Owen. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, yeah. Very excellent choice. Uh, best detective story, because you're in one. Uh, yeah, it's got to be Professor T, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, how could anyone look beyond that for a detective yeah, story? I think um, so too. 
there's there's a British series called um, Life on Mars where a guy uh, goes into a coma and he gets transported from the I think it's the mid noughties back to the 1970s. Um, that that's one of my favourite detective shows. I would say that's is that called the mid noughties? Yeah, yeah, the two uh, thousands. Yeah, the noughties. All right. Okay, yeah. I didn't know that. Never heard that before. Yeah, it was yeah, really yeah. Funny. Uh, best short film because you uh, like your favorite short film because you've been in a lot of short films. Yes, um, my favorite so, short uh, film is a is a mockumentary called Brian and Charles. You can get it all on Vimeo. They actually just made a feature film out of it. It's about a guy living in rural Wales who builds his own robot, um, and it's 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 absolutely brilliant. All Brian right. and Charles, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a nice recommendation. I'll uh, check it out. Yeah. Um, yeah. your favorite comedy. Uh, my favorite comedy is comedy film or comedy TV series. Either uh, you can you can choose maybe both because it's it's very different. Um, yeah, my, my favorite comedy is is The Office, the UK Office. Right. It's my favorite comedy, um, and also there's a TV series uh, at the moment on British television called Statlets Flats. I love that. That's okay. Very funny. Yes, it's probably my favorite modern uh, modern comedy. And uh, comedy film. <laughs> As a kid, I used to love Austin Powers. Yeah, I still do. <laughs> film, but I recently rewatched it, and uh, it's it's one of those that doesn't do so well uh, with modern sensibilities. Well, but, but I think in terms of influence on me, I've got to say Austin Powers. Yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. I I, 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 I could quote, quote that whole film. Yeah, yeah, it's it's so quotable uh, and and so memorable. But uh, I I also rewatched that like two months ago. And um, I was also very afraid that that like I, I wouldn't find it funny anymore. Um, but the the jokes it, it's very it's very wrong. Uh, everything is like very um, it's not a, it's not woke anymore. No, uh, no, 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 is, it's not PC. Yeah, but yeah. I, I I also don't think it it was that woke back then. No, like, no, for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah. It's absolutely. like I think it's kind of the point, and and like yeah. there. Yeah. They're they're kind of taking the fizz out of it, and that's like completely. Yeah. Well, he's a he's a kind of wrong un from the nineteen sixties turning yeah. up in a in a different age. Yeah, it, it, exactly. It's um, yeah, it's yeah. like <laughs> like Tropic Thunder. Um, it's it's also not the the most uh, yeah, the most PC film if you watch yeah. it now. And but it came out in two thousand eight, where blackface was already not okay. And yeah, and like, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I think that movie was not okay, but they were they were laughing with it. They were uh, mm -hmm. they were um, yeah, it. yeah. It. So, and Robert Downey Jr.'s performance in Top Tropic Thunder is maybe his best performance ever. <laughs> yeah, I actually haven't seen Oppenheimer, but he's meant to be brilliant in in it. Yeah, he's, he's really good in that. Yeah. It's yeah. uh, yeah, if yeah. you if you take a writing break of uh, like about three hours, then uh, then, then yeah, I, well, I, I often do, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um uh, actually just go back to a previous conversation we had he's absolutely brilliant in uh richard the third shakespeare play with ian mckellen uh, shakespeare film with ian mckellen um in the title role and um oh, it's, he, he's he's really young it's like 1994 i think and um maybe even earlier and uh he's brilliant and it's got a young um oh, i've completely forgotten his name anyway it's got a great cast and Ian McKellen's mm. amazing as Richard the Third, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's also great in uh in Natural Born Killers, which I watched recently. Mm. Uh, yeah, was, he, that performance is so. He was he was very. It was like his, his drug period, uh, like before rehab. Uh, but um, yeah, he's he's so good in that. He's uh, he's so energetic and and like, uh, yeah, it, it plays such a cool character. Like like also a very horrible human being, but uh. Yeah. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then uh, to end things on, uh, your uh, favorite British film, like just if it's from the UK, it's eligible. Okay, and it can't be Sexy Beast, I suppose. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> next to uh, uh, other next to this one. Well, I, I love the Long Good Friday with um, yeah Bob Hoskins. That's a great film. But I mean, if it counts. Uh, it's directed by an Englishman, so Gladiator. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right. Uh, the, yeah, it's really no, Ridley no, Scott. it's uh, really yeah, yeah, it's Ridley Scott. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's uh, funny. I mean, whenever anyone asks me what my favorite film is, I always want to say something cool 
and you know trendy and and you know some art house French <laughs> Italian cinema from the fifties, but <laughs> it's Gladiator. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, I'm not ashamed to admit it. It's, it's Gladiator. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just a, an amazing film. Uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. epic and. Pirates of the Caribbean stole its score from there. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I, I, the, the other, the other film I really like is Kill List. Ben Ben Wheatley's. Uh, yeah, uh, it's so underrated. Yeah, it's, no brilliant. one has seen that, and yeah. it's so good. It's brilliant. That is that is that is a great British film. Um, and again, like uh, like Sexy Beast, it really bucks the trend of of British gangster films. It's so different, yeah. so weird and odd. Um, and, but unlike Sexy Beast, it's done presumably with absolutely no budget at all because it, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't have the gloss and the the kind of um, the sexy cinematography. It's it's uh, cowboy filmmaking at its at its finest. Yeah. So raw. It's it's like uh, yeah. very, yeah. Uh, also, the end is so creepy. Oh God, yeah, and so weird. And, and the and the, the uh, dialogue is is feel. you can feel that it's improvised and it feels mm -hmm. so real. So unstylized. So it's really different film to Sexy Beast, but they're both uh, both brilliant. Did you uh, do you know uh, which which uh, which is the, the 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 last movie Ben Wheatley directed? Yeah, the Meg Two. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so funny. Yeah, um, but he like his recent track record hasn't been that that great. I I think um, in, in the beginning he made such good movies, but. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, I'm gonna check. Like Free Fire was also nice. Um, yeah, Field of England's amazing. Yeah. That's a kind of strange hallucinatory. Uh, yeah, uh, English Civil War film. There's barely any films about the English Civil War, so it's uh, mm. it's it's really really brilliant and has such a great kind of um, comedy cast. Yeah, um, of, of of great British comic comic actors. Um, but I never saw High Rise with um, Tom Hiddleston. No, uh, but I like the book, so maybe I should get check that out. Yeah, it's like it's it's a classic book, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ballard. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Also, um, still need to check that out. Yeah. Um, and and sorry, I mean we we could go on and on, but uh, I've, I I should should mention Train Spotting. That probably yeah. is my great my favorite British film. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> uh i uh like when i when i did the uh, podcast with andy he um he made me watch um with neil and i oh really oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. A, a great discovery because i i i'd never heard of it yes uh, um and it really reminded me of um of strange spotting in a in a few ways and also yeah. bleak, the naked. bleak vision of britain yeah, and, yeah. Uh, really really bleak vision of britain it's like yeah. Uh, a place you really don't want to go uh, if you watch those <laughs> yeah. movies. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. It's um, yeah, it's, it, that's a great film. With and I is one of the most quoted uh, films in Britain. Yeah, it's, it's become part of the kind of national language. You know, people just quote without realizing they're quoting from it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, is there is there anything you would uh, you would like to plug like uh, where where can people follow you if if you want that or or what uh, should people watch? Um, well, this 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 podcast, you know, obviously anyone can access it, but mostly by Belgians, right? I mean, people in Flanders yeah. will be listening to it. Um, so if so, yeah, if you see me in a bar in Antwerp, come and say <laughs> hi. And we can discuss films. That would be my yeah. plan. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, yeah, so uh, so okay, that's uh, that's it. I always say uh, uh, this was a video take the following the week, which is this was the video store until next week, but it doesn't rhyme, uh, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> so uh, I still uh, got to say this. You could say something like um, uh, that was the video store. Tune in for more. Yeah, yeah, amazing. There you yeah. Go. That's, that's your English catchphrase. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was the video store. Tune in for more. Uh, <laughs> Amazing. All right. Thank you so much for uh, what you. Thank you. I really enjoyed that.